Now let's look at this numerically again in this example. Suppose we have a lever that we're using to lift a heavy mass. So here's our lever. And suppose the mass is at a distance of two feet from the fulcrum. So here's the mass. The mass actually has some width to it. What you need to think about is the distance from the fulcrum to the center of the mass. So that far would be the distance. And we're told that that distance is two feet. So I'll mark that and indicate two feet. And then the input force is applied at a distance of 10 feet from the fulcrum. So this distance over here on this side, our downward force acts at a distance of 10 feet. So I'll mark that as 10 feet. The thing to take note of is this ratio, 10 feet compared to 2 feet. 10 divided by 2 is 5. The input force acts at a distance that is five times as great as the distance for the output force. Because of this, the output force, the force that gets that is pushing up on the mass, is going to be five times as large as our input force. So we get a gain, a multiplying of the force by a factor of five. But it only works for one fifth of the distance. The movement down on this end is going to end up being five times as much as the movement upward over there. So it lifts with five times as much force but only for one-fifth the, the distance. So you can imagine if we push this down five feet this end only goes up one foot. So what we gain in force we give up in distance. Now this is true even if the fulcrum is at the end point of the lever. You might have a situation like this where you have a lever that's pinned against the ground at one end. Say you have a board and you have the mass that you're lifting right here and here you are over here. And so you're lifting up on this end. That's your upward force F1, your input force. And the result is the output force over here is F2. So once again, we can think of the, the input force as the force we put into the lever and the output force is the force the lever pushes up with on the object. Now the distances here, take note, the distance D2 is the distance from F2 to the fulcrum. So I'll draw some little dotted lines and indicate that distance right there is D2. This distance is D1. The distance from the input force to the fulcrum. So be careful. D1 is not this distance here. D1 is the distance from the force to the fulcrum. The fulcrum in this case is the pivot point. It's not an actual object like this little triangle or some device that the lever balances on. The fulcrum is just the point about which it rotates and in this case it's the end point of the lever. And then the math works out the same. If D1 is 10 feet and D2 is 5 feet then D1 is, uh, I'm sorry, if D1 is 10 feet and D2 is two feet like we had before, then D1 is five times as large as D2. So the output force ends up being five times as great as the input force, but the output distance ends up being only one-fifth.